Hello everyone and welcome! My name is Jake and the game that you are looking at right now is Spaceborn 2. Now the title of this video is not clickbait, this is an open world space RPG made by just one person. Everything you're going to see here was made by one dude and this game is massive. So I wanted to make this video just to talk about this game a little bit because I had never heard of it until recently until a friend told me about it and I was in the Starfield subreddit just yesterday and I saw someone mention this game and again everyone in the subreddit had never heard of it so it's quite under the radar and I just wanted to speak about it a little bit just to try and get it out there and to some of you guys who might be waiting on Starfield this might be of interest to you so I just wanted to get it out there a little bit. And a big shout out to my friend Connor, CNA, for actually not only showing me this game, but also sending me a free copy. I really, really appreciate that, so big shout out to him for doing this. But before we start, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and leave a like if you feel so inclined. It really does help me out a lot and it really, really goes a long way. But with that said, let's jump straight into the video because I have quite a bit to talk about here and I just want to get into this game a little bit. So just to be clear, this is not a review of the game. I have not put enough hours into this game to review it. As I mentioned previously, this is a huge game. It is unbelievably big, so I have barely even scratched the surface. I just wanted to talk about it and just again just bring some attention to it and just talk about it for a little bit. So again this is not a review, it's more of just a showcase and a sort of first impressions I guess. So what is Spaceborn 2? Well it is a single player open universe RPG and a third person shooter game with an abundance of features. Now that is from the direct developer coming straight from the store page and that is right, it, it is an open universe RPG. Uh, there's an entire galaxy that you can explore, thousands of solar systems, all planets with procedural generation and cities and various other things. Th there's a lot. There's a lot just on the surface of this game. It is pretty big. And again, just for one person making this, it is unbelievably impressive. But w what's the game actually like, right? W what is it? What do you do? Well, the main point of this game, the main story is to build up an empire. And yeah, you heard that right. You actually build up your own empire full of people that you can assign missions to, assign squads to. And essentially, your goal is to end up either ruling the galaxy or making it a safer place to live. Again, you can kind of choose how you want to do this. You can either go straight up and be evil and just control the entire galaxy and anyone who doesn't agree with you would die. Or you can try and be a fair ruler. But again, the whole point is to essentially build up your empire and control the galaxy. But you don't actually have to do any of that if you don't want to. There are a bunch of role playing options in the game and you can just take normal jobs doing mining, trading, piracy, crafting, freelancing, exploration, bounty hunting, just to name a few. There's quite a lot of things that you can do. So there's basically a bunch of guilds in this game that you can join. And once you join with them, you're able to accept missions to do with those guilds. So for example, you can join the mercenary guild and then you'll get given mercenary contracts where you'll go down to a planet, land at an outpost, and you'll get into a firefight with a bunch of enemies, usually clear it or hack a server or some sort of thing. And then you'll complete that mission. You'll get some credits added to your account and it's a nice way to earn money. At the moment, I have only unlocked five guilds and I think there are three others with question marks on them. I'm not sure if these are in the game yet and if you unlock them later, I'm, I'm not entirely sure. But the five guilds that I have now are bounty hunting, freelance jobs, mercenary, exploration, and one other that I don't quite remember. So already that sounds like quite a lot, right? There is a bunch of planets, there are a bunch of missions and a bunch of role playing options. That's quite a lot. But again, we aren't even scratching the surface of this game yet. But let's pull back a minute and let's look at the game from a technical side and kind of just see how it all works because there are some things that I want to mention here which may drive some players away but I feel as though it's something that should be mentioned in a game like this. Bear in mind this is all made by just one developer and it is pretty cheap right now. I believe it is on sale on Steam for about £11. Yeah, so normally the game is £15 but at the moment it is 30% off so you can get it for £11.72 on Steam with the uh, summer sale so... Again, keep all of that in mind, it's an indie game, it's pretty cheap and it is made by just one person. But let's just talk about the whole technical side of the game. So, for the most part, when you're flying in space and getting into space combat and stuff, the game feels incredibly good. It, it looks good, it feels great, it feels as though he has absolutely nailed that aspect of the game. To be honest, when I'm in space combat, there are moments when I forget that I'm playing an indie game made by one guy, because 
it really does just feel that good and that fluid when you're in space combat and just exploring space in general. There are a lot of cool things, so you can contact space stations and you have to request docking like in Star Citizen and Elite Dangerous. There are stargates on the outer side of each galaxy which can quickly transport you around between gal galaxies. Although you do not have to actually use these, you can just warp drive between the galaxies yourself if you have a wanted level or something, because if you are wanted, you won't be able to use these stargates because they serve kind of like checkpoints. There are two separate maps that you get. So you have a galaxy map, which allows you to set warp drive destinations between planets and objectives between your missions. And then there is a galaxy map that you open, which allows you to set a route between different star systems, which it took a while for me to get used to, um, it, it is a bit complicated at first and the tutorial for this game is about 5 or 6 hours long, so you're gonna have quite a lot to learn but it's not too steep of a learning curve, I think pretty much everyone will get it after a bit, it just takes a little while of using it to get used to the interface. But as I mentioned, the whole space thing is incredibly cool and for the most part it works really smooth. The, the, the place where this game gets a bit iffy is when you land on planets. Now, as I said, this is all procedurally generated, so all of this is using procedural generation to create unique areas and unique cities, and of course unique encounters. But when you do land on a planet, it really does feel like this game is some sort of Unity asset flip. Now, the combat, the third person combat, is not very good. I'm just gonna say that now, it, it isn't very great. It isn't awful, it's, it's serviceable but it's just not that good in general. Now, there is a limb damage system where you can blow limbs off of enemies and sometimes you cripple them and they end up on the floor wounded and you can kind of finish them off, which I really like and I thought it was really cool and I do enjoy that whenever that happens in combat and just walking up to an enemy and then, you know, shooting him in the head and executing him. I think that's quite a bit of fun, but for the most part, the combat isn't that great. The AI is a bit all over the place. It'll either just charge you or run out in the open. The cities that spawn are usually just a couple of buildings placed around with nothing inside of them nor outside of them. It's just like a bunch of, you know, random cities or uh, random buildings, sorry. And quite often I actually find floating props around the place as well. So some of the buildings will be floating and there will be barrels that are floating. And even in space stations, I have found missized props. So, for example, there was um, at one point there was a door that didn't quite fit in the door area. So there was like a gap between the door and the wall, and it kind of just let you see through the station. So there are things like that that remind you that this is a game built by one person. And again, it does kind of give me Unity asset flip flashbacks. But let me reassure you that this game is far from that. Now, of course, again, this is an entire galaxy we're talking about here. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of solar systems for you to explore and planets for you to hop on. So, of course, none of these are going to be high detail and perfect and all of that sort of thing. But I just thought it was something that I'd bring up because, again, it is something that is there. It is a fact of the game that these are going to be very low quality areas. So you have to be able to put that aside in order to get some enjoyment out of this game. Now, you're not gonna spend a lot of time on planets, to be honest. You'll go there occasionally to do missions, but for the most part, you're going to be up in space. And as I mentioned, when you're not on the ground, when you're actually in your ship, everything in this game is incredibly high quality. It like surprisingly high quality. And again, it just seems to sort of all work. Now, there is no seamless transition between in atmospheric flight and space. Now. First of all, there is atmospheric flight, so this is something that not even Starfield could pull off that this one developer seemingly has, so you can actually go down to a planet and you can fly across the entire planet to get to your destination if you want to. That It takes a very long time, obviously, but you can do that. As well as that, there is also dynamic weather on these planets, so again, there's a lot of systems going on here, which again is incredibly impressive for just one person. But the way it works uh, when you leave the planet, when you leave the atmosphere and go into space, it basically does a little cutscene, which you won't really notice, to be honest. But it just kind of fogs up your screen a bit or sets it on fire if you're entering the atmosphere and then all of a sudden you're out in space or you're inside the atmosphere. But let's jump into the more mechanical side of this game and look at some of the systems that are going on here and some of the stuff that you can do in the game because there is a lot going on. So as I mentioned earlier, you can join a guild which gives you access to a bunch of missions with their guild. So whether it be freelancing, mercenary, bounty hunting, whatever, you can join any guild and you will just get a bunch of missions given to 
to you, these are all procedurally generated across the galaxy, so you have to go to different destinations to do different things. But on top of that, there is also an entire economy system here. Now, I didn't look too much into this because it's all incredibly confusing, and as I said, this game has a surprising amount of depth going on. But you can become a full-time trader if you want and just go out mining into the world and selling those materials that you get to whichever galaxy is going to pay you the most. On top of that, each star system has its own ruler and its own sort of faction ruling it. Now, again, I haven't gone too far into the game yet, so I'm assuming that when it comes down to where my organization is big enough, I'm going to be rivaling these other organization and star leaders, and I'm going to be trying to take control of their star system, so you'll be going to war with certain factions. And again, you can see that when you use a Stargate to get to a new galaxy, it'll pop up and it will give you the name of the leader and a little picture of them. So again, there is an entire economy system at work here and an entire faction system on top of it. So there is literally an entire diplomacy system going on that I have barely even scratched into the surface of yet. So not only is there an entire main storyline in this game and a faction system, but there is also a bunch of side quests that you can take on. And these side quests can vary from mercenary work to freelancer to bounty hunting. It gives you a bit more insight into the world and the lore, and also provides a nice change of pace from the main story. Now I have only done about five side missions so far and they have all varied completely differently within objectives and I'm definitely looking forward to doing a lot more, and it does seem like there are a lot. I usually find about three at every single space station. Now, all of the characters in this game are using AI to talk. It's AI voice lines, so sometimes they sound a bit off. Some characters sound a lot better than others, but again, it's just something that I wanted to bring up because I thought it was an interesting choice. Usually, these sort of games will just have subtitles, and you will just read it and do the voice in your head, but this game decided to use AI voice lines. Everyone in the galaxy should sleep with one eye open. That's when those flatbind leaders have- So, the last word is yours. Which way do you think we should go? Now, in some instances, that's absolutely necessary because the characters will talk to you while you're in combat or while you're flying around, and you haven't really got time to read what they're saying, so having an AI voice line makes sense. But having it in the main story does sometimes make it a bit weird. Again, some of the AI voices are a lot better than the others. But it was just something that I wanted to bring up because it is something that can occasionally pull you out of the immersion, but I didn't think was too big of an issue. Now, some of the main story sections in this game are pretty impressive with quite large set pieces. There was one mission uh, that I remember where there was this huge battle going on and then this big alien space worm ended up coming out of nowhere and attacking one of the capital ships. That sort of thing and that kind of set piecing is really impressive when it happens and again, for a game like this, it's it's quite impressive how the developer has managed to pull this off. Again, th I, I don't think this video really does it justice, just how impressive this game actually is. I mean, this would be impressive if it, was if it was made by an entire team of developers, but this again was just made by one person somehow. I, I really just can't wrap my head around how any of this was possible, and again, I, I just know this video is absolutely not going to do the game justice. So yeah, the game has a lot going on. Too much for me to talk about in this video, because if I did, we would be here all day, and also I wouldn't be able to make this video for about another month, because again, I would have to experience all of this for myself, and in my playthrough, I am barely just scratching the surface. Obviously, the main driving point of this game is the whole empire thing, right? Building up your organization. And the way that that works is pretty interesting. So you have a choice at the start to pick three different routes. I don't remember what the first one was, but there is a justice route, which essentially is kind of the middle ground. You're a little bit evil and a little bit good. It sort of depends case by case. And then there is the... Uh, chaos route, which is kind of just going for Nazi, and anyone who isn't human will be executed. So there is some role-playing options there for you, and you can change which kind of route your organization goes at any point, though if you do this you will lose all your members of the organization, it's kind of like a hard reset, but that option is there if you want to do that. And you essentially operate your organization out of a HQ on this planet, and from there you can assign roles to each member, get operations going, assign people to your own personal squad to help you with personal missions, and of course just build up your organization and start to conquer the galaxy. Now I still have a lot to learn about this game, and I still have a lot to see. Again, this game is unbelievably huge. That being said, it is also full of a bunch of jank, especially when you're on the ground. Again, the ship stuff is pretty good. When you're in combat, 
and everything's flowing, everything's working pretty well, it's a really cool experience. You have flares going off everywhere, rockets, enemies firing at you, you firing at enemies. It, it looks really impressive. There's a lot of effects going on during these battles, but all of that does change when you get on the ground because everything kind of degrades in quality quite a lot. Not just the environments, but also, again, the AI and the actual gunplay is quite weak. Now, personally, I don't mind that, but I don't think that's something that's ever going to change. Again, this game is huge, and it clearly has its focus on other more important areas than, say, how good a city looks on the ground or how well the third-person gunplay plays. So, it is something that is worth noting that you have to be okay with the jankiness if you're going to play this game, because I think th this kind of a game is too big of a project for one person. Normally, I would say if you're thinking about making anything like this on your own, you're absolutely crazy. But obviously, this developer is somehow pulling this off. I do not understand how, but he is over here doing it. But again, as I mentioned, of course, that is going to come with a whole bunch of jank, which probably is never going to be fixed. I think even in full release, this game is going to be a jank fest. And bear that in mind, the game is currently in early access right now and it does get an update every week or so, so again there are very consistent bug fixes and updates going out, and I haven't really noticed that many bugs. There have been a few UI bugs that have happened, but other than that there's been nothing major. I have had one major crash where I actually had to reset my entire PC because Steam thought the game was uninstalled for some reason. But other than that, in my 10 hours of playing I haven't really experienced anything too major or too game breaking, so again that is incredibly surprising just how well this game actually works. But yeah, I don't know, I just wanted to make this video just to talk about the game a little bit and just to kind of get it out there, maybe pique your interest in it and, and get you to go and look into it a bit more. There are many better reviews on YouTube of people who have actually put hundreds of hours into this game and I highly suggest you go and look in uh, some of the other videos if you're interested or just go look at the store Steam page yourself. The whole point of this video was not to go too much in depth with the mechanics and how everything works because again, I barely have even played it that much myself, it was more just to say, hey, this game is a really cool project and I think more people should know about its existence. So I just wanted to kind of do my part to try and get it out there. And if you're like me and you are patiently waiting for Starfield but really struggling to hold on, then this game might just pull you over until Starfield releases in September. So again, if you're looking forward to Starfield, you should definitely check this game out too. But that's pretty much it, so let me know what you think. Have you played Spaceborn 2? Does this game look like it appeals to you? Let me know all of your thoughts down in the comments below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed and that notification bell so you know when I next upload a video. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Jake and I'll see you next time. Regulations. Go to the board of directors office at number 101. Legal action be taken for any of this payment. Thank you for your